People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. If it's your first time here, you now know who it is. This is Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. Wow, it has been a journey. It has been a journey. What a journey it has been. Journey it has been. Okay, I try mixing it up as many times as I can, but I just couldn't. Guys, if you don't know me, now you do. I'm Arsenio Buck, born and raised in Las Vegas. I've been teaching in Thailand for three years. I've also lived in Australia for a year working as a dental assistant. Uh, and it's crazy because <laughs> my time here has been no wonderful time. I've gone through some of the darkest days and darkest hours of my life in terms of being an African-American. Uh, but today is one of the glorious moments of my life. I uh, woke up at about 2.30 a.m., looked at my phone, and I realized that my podcast was approved by Apple. And now I have a link, and I could actually find myself on the Apple iStore, my own app, in terms of having a podcast. Now, you can see a lot of podcasts out there on the App Store and whatnot. A lot of them have a lot of reviews. They talk about politics and stuff like that. That's not what this podcast is going to be about. It's going to be about destroying negative habits, trying to get out of the nine to five drudgery and trying to figure out what you can do with your money on top of so many other miscellaneous, uh, miscellaneous topics. Um, being able to wake up, being able to have the opportunity to not only change lives, but to start developing projects little by little in terms of achieving some of the greatest goals out there in terms of people who are just simply listening to improve their English, to people who are trying to change the savings and change the lives of their kids and their grandchildren in terms of money and retirement. People who are seemingly just trying to be more productive. This morning I woke up at 6.30 because, I mean, I was just laying in my bed, tossing and turning in excitement for about an hour and a half, went back to sleep, had the most ridiculous dream. Oh my God, the dream was too funny. Oh, you know what? It's crazy because I've only been up for about 30 minutes and it feels like I'm still in the dream world. So what I had to do, my habit that I just developed in the last three days, thanks to Tony Robbins, I jumped in a boiling hot shower and then I, for about 30 seconds, and then I turned it off, uh, it turned off the water and it was just freezing cold for 30 seconds. For those of you who have listened to my podcast yesterday in terms of Stephen Covey's book, congratulations. You guys have already heard this. But the thing is, but I guess you could say within the last five hours, there has been a big change. I mean, <laughs> even, yes, even, 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 even with waking up and having this particular dream, whereas I was in another business class hotel. I just went to Malaysia just recently. Uh, and I was in a business class hotel. Well, this dream, I was actually with one of my mentors, a colleague of mine. Uh, his name is Harry. Now, Harry, he was in the dream. But the thing is, Harry was traveling all around the world, something that I wanted to do in terms of business. And it's crazy because the podcast was actually in my dream, too. And we went, uh, let's just say, a push came to shove. Harry went to another place. But the funny thing is, here I am. I don't even know where I was. But we were literally snowboarding down an icy mountain. There, were, there was a Jamaican team from the Olympics there. It was ridiculous. But the crazy, I'm telling you, that's how dreams are, right? But the funniest thing about it was I was still checking my podcast. And at the time I was checking my podcast, I realized that Denmark, oh my God, who was it? It was Denmark, Somalia. Oh, there were a few countries, but oh my God, I had like 2,000 plays in an hour or something like that. And it's amazing because, you know, it's kind of funny because what you have in dreams ultimately ends up manifesting in real life. No, I'm not saying going down a goddamn icy mountain. I'm talking about the thing, what happened in the early wee, you know, wee hours of the morning was in my dream. And then normally what, what happens, of course, you're thinking about this and unconsciously when you go into your subconscious and everything, go to sleep, guess what's there? The podcast, whatever you were thinking about before you went to sleep, right? That's why they say, whatever you feed your mind 45 minutes to an hour before you go to sleep, you are seven times more prone 
to seeing that in your dream than anything that has taken place throughout the day. Am I right? Am I right? Try it. Try it. I dare you. I double dare you. Go on YouTube. Watch a trip of uh, people surfing in Waikiki, Hawaii. And you know what? That's going to end up being in your dream. You want to bet? Bet me. I bet you. I double dare you. Okay? And then you can message me at AJ in Thailand and tell me how the dream was. (laughs) Without further ado, people. If you don't know Tony Robbins, he's the man. Tony Robbins, that was the first movie that actually made me cry on a public bus. I had to, I had to like cover my tears. Tony Robbins, I'm not a guru. You can find it on Netflix. You can get it for 30. You could actually download Netflix and have it 30 days for free. Um, there's not many movies on there. They're kind of old too. But uh, like pretty much I already watched all of them. But this particular movie and him seeing him do that ritual in the morning. And actually seeing the transformation within these 2,500 people who are probably billionaires because it costs like 5,000 US dollars, 150,000 baht for a ticket to go to this specific seminar that's in, I think, Boca Boca Raton, Florida, I think. I don't know. I'm probably way off. Um, And it's crazy because, I mean, hearing some of those stories and seeing the emotion Wow, I remember I was in the gym. I was so pumped up. I, I was on the bus coming home, and I reached up a certain point in regards to this one woman who went through the worst transgressions any human being could possibly go through. Here I am crying, trying to cover it up, uh, and that was the biggest transformation in my life. And then that's when I'm like, you know what? Tony Robbins, he always talked about the money master the game book, and it's crazy because that's what we're going to talk about today, 1.1, and you know what's great about it? Dependent on the demand, okay? I want everyone to listen closely. I don't know if you're Thai. I don't know if you're Saudi Arabian. I don't know if you're Zambanese. No, I'm kidding. It's not Zamb- Zambian. Okay, I was just, I was kidding. Come on, I was kidding. Don't, don't, don't trip. I don't know if you're Argentinian, okay? I don't know if you're Peruvian. If you don't understand everything I'm saying, please message me at AJ in Thailand. Dependent on the demand, I will transcribe, <clears throat> I will transcribe this podcast. So, therefore, I am going to actually have pay someone, probably like, let's say 30 baht a minute, to write down, yes, to write down everything I say within this podcast, so you guys could actually have the sheet of paper at hand. Okay, or on your phone and also listen to so you get best of the both. uh, You get, you know, best of the both worlds. Right. And after one chapter, let's say after like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, stuff like that. After one chapter, I'm going to turn it into a course. Now, this course is for those who don't want to go from one point one to one point two to one point three to one point four. You just want to get the biggest things out of each chapter. And you want to actually start putting everything to test. Now, rather than just reading the book, you could wake up in the morning and listen to this podcast. That's the beauty of it. Okay. Woo! With that being said, people, this is actually, it's crazy because now that I think about it, it's amazing how people can literally just download my podcast from the iTunes store. And people are probably listening in right now. And you can communicate with me through chat. And there's no way that I can actually delete an episode anymore. So whatever I say is out there to the world. So I better keep it clean. Keep it clean as I, as I possibly can. Or boy, there's going to be some mess out there. No, of course not. I'm the man. This is my podcast. Because I'm the owner of it. That was actually one of the biggest journeys of actually putting this podcast on the iTunes store. Because here I am with a brilliant, uh, what is it, political science student that I had yesterday. Brilliant guy. And I was like, man, help me. He's like, all right, let's see what we got. Of course, Thai student from one from the great Thomas Hot. And, you know, we're just trying to figure this out. And I'm like, God dang it. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste this link on here. He's like, do it. And he just said, do it. I said, oh, OK, no, what are you what are you trying to do? Uh, I copy paste it. It worked. I submitted it within 24 hours. I have my own podcast on the app store. It's just a beautiful thing. With that being said, people, let's get into it. Chapter 1.1. It's your money. It's your life. Take control. Let's talk about money. 
Let's talk about money. When you think about money, does that get you emotional? There's no other word out there that provokes such strong emotion, except probably religion, sex, politics. A lot of us just refuse to talk about money. It's like it's like a taboo. It's something you don't talk about at the dinner table. It's off limits in the workplace. You know, we might discuss wealth in polite company, but we'll never just talk about money explicitly. It's raw. You know what? It's so it's so personal that people would get in fights. Like literally, like if you talk about religion, especially in America, if you talk about religion, boy, within five minutes, this yeah, yeah, the everyone is stressed out. People are standing up, people are yelling at each other, and a fight's about to erupt. Okay, that's kind of what, like, money is. You know what's crazy? Quick story. When I came back from Australia to, what is it, to Las Vegas, and I started working as a dental assistant again before I came to Thailand a year later in 2013, um, this lady, wonderful lady, Brenda Marion, she worked at the big dental college out there, uh, in college, you know, uh, at College of Southern Nevada. And it's crazy because she gave me like a 60% pay increase and I didn't know. And I remember one time she told me, she's like, don't you show anybody. I said, damn, um, am am I going to be shot? You know, I went home and I I was just sitting on the couch for about two hours, man. My eyes were wide open at 1130 at night. I said, am I going to be shot? Because that was a pretty bold statement that she just made. It's crazy. But you know what? Money is just simply a tool, a source of power used in service of others and life well lived, right? But you know what? It's crazy because such hunger for money, this particular tool destroys them, destroys us, destroys me and everyone around them. Have you seen it? There's a lot of places. Wink, wink, Thailand. Thailand, I've seen money destroy the commute in the morning, <laughs> If you live here, if you live here in Thailand, you know what I'm talking about. Money has literally destroyed the commute for Thai people and everyone in general in the morning. People are stuck in traffic for two hours every morning. Oh, but when it rains, I remember I had one student work at the airport. He works at the airport, and it's probably about let's say 40 kilometers, okay, which is about 20, 20 plus miles away from his home. It took him five hours to get home that night. He didn't get home till 11 p.m. He got off at 6. Money has single-handedly destroyed Thailand because of the traffic jams here. Amazing, ain't it? You know what? But the thing is, we're willing to give up things. We're willing to give up things in general to get money, like health, our time, our family, our self-worth. Everything. You know what? But we've all seen the power that money could actually do. It could give us great power to do good or to destroy us. It can fund a dream or start a war. You can provide money as a gift or you can wield it as a weapon. Am I right? It can be used as an expression of your spirit, your creativity, your ideas, or how about your frustration, your anger, your hate? War. Look at war. War all around the world. Oh, we're going to, oh, the America has just paid $2 billion for a single plane. And that plane is a human killer. It's crazy, man. I was in Vietnam this past April. And I remember looking at this massive artillery thing. I thought it was a beautiful thing until I read what was on the fine print in front of it. It said, this machine alone did mass casualty in this country. So I was standing in front of a machine that took thousands of lives of people, of Vietnamese people. That broke my heart. That's when I realized, you know, how much money can influence governments, wars, individuals, everything. But you know what? In the end, we're after it still, right? What we're really after are the feelings and the emotions, though, that we think money, that we think money can create. That feeling of empowerment, that feeling of freedom, security, helping those who we love and those in need. The feeling of having a choice, and the feeling of being alive. You know, it's money is certainly one of the ways we can just turn the dreams, What you know, what we have, the dreams that we have every day, we could turn it into reality. But how we deal with money reflects how we deal with power too. Is it an affliction or a blessing, a game or a burden? 
The best way to change your life 